Hello, this is Bjorn from Cujo Sound, and this is the very per first part of my tutorial on how to make a digital loop tool using very simple methods. Um, we're going to be using Cubase, as you see right here. Um, we're going to hook it up with my Nord modular that I have next to me here, and we're going to control it using some 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 patches we're going to make in max msp to make it run these loops that we've created with cubase to make them play simultaneously loop wise so that you can make a nice little tool uh, you can experiment all you want with this when we're done but this experiment is for me to experiment with this and then you can see how i did so now the the first thing to do is to hook up the nord modular and i have made this very simple patch right here um, it runs just these these constant objects. The, these these objects use basically no DSP power. It doesn't really matter because because we would be using something that runs no power anyway. But I have hooked these up. Just it has one controller. If you right click click the controller, you can see that it, I've attached it to knob number one on the the modular, and I've set it to run controller number one um, and. This second one, for example, runs knob number two, and it runs another, another kind of controller. So they all have have different numbers. They all have different knob numbers, and they all have different controllers. And the thing is that when I turn a button here on the modular, you can see that this actually responds to it. Um, this is fairly nice. Um, they all respond. They all respond. They respond. It seems like they're responding pretty slow, but they're not. They're actually responding really fast because everything is happening MIDI wise. And the only reason this looks slow is because of your your computer having to interpret the numbers first to show you. Now, let's get back to serious business here. This is a max patch. And what we're going to do actually is is in this first part of, of what I'm going to show you, we're just going to be talking about how Maximus P actually works, how it interprets signals, what you can do with these. So if you're familiar with that already, you can just uh, move, move ahead because, because this is, um, this is pretty basic stuff. All right. First thing to do here is to see if we can make MIDI signals come into the max patch. This is fairly simple uh, and I'll show you. I have hooked up my Nord modular. It just runs the MIDI out on the modular into whatever MIDI in I have on my setup. And we make a new object by pressing the N button. Um, and this one, as you can see, you're typing. It comes up with ideas of what it could be. And what we, the one we want is the MIDI in. MIDI in. And you can see what comes out of the MIDI in are, is raw MIDI messages. Over here, we have our max window. This prints all the messages we want to come out um, if we send anything to this object called print. This is fairly simple. So the raw MIDI messages goes to the print. So basically, you should be able to see whatever comes into MIDI should come out over here. So let's try turning knob number one on the modular. As you see, it's it's chunked up in three bits, three parts. Um, as you may have noticed, this number one here shows that it's it's MIDI controller number one, and this is the value of number one. You can see the value decrease and increase and decrease all the time. Now let's let's try knob number two, and you can see this is this is just knob number two, and with a different value. Also, let's try and see here what happens if we actually hit one of the keys on the on the modular. Let's see. There you go. This shows you two different things. This is key number thirty-six. See. Message 144 means that it's down, and message 128 means that it's up. Uh, and this is the velocity value. So if I go like this really hard, the harder I put it down, 
the higher my velocity value will be when I when it goes in. You see 144, uh, key number 36, and it has a velocity of 27. Now, if I let go really soft, it should show 128, 36, and 1. Well, there you go. This is really useful because if you could combine these into one into one message, and you can you can use the values to to do different things, no matter depending on how hard you press the button, which means that once you press this button, maybe something is activated. Um, could be. So now we're gonna see if we can use make make max MSP interpret the the different key numbers and use them differently. So. What we're going to do is we're going to make an object called cell. There is one right now called select as well. I just prefer to use the cell one. And what cell does is that it sends out a bang. Now, we haven't talked about bangs yet, but I can quickly explain it. A bang is just a signal like you're pushing something, activating something, whatever you want it to be. Um, if you put in a button here. and you press it, this is like sending a bang, like a button, you know, you're tapping the button. All right, so here we have our cell, and you remember as we saw before that it was number 36, and we probably have key 37 as well, oh, and 38 and 39. We take this MIDI here, and we put in some, let's say, some some buttons. And now if I press button number one, you can see it bangs. Whenever I let go let it down and when I let up, that's because the number 36 is sent, sent twice. And this is key. On my keyboard, 37, and this is 38, and 39. So now, already now, I can change whatever I want, and I can make this bang control whatever I want in in something else. Let's say it could be a VST instrument. It could be something completely different that we want to control. Now, we would prefer something else than these buttons here because we just wanted to interpret whether the, the, but the key on the keyboard is down or up which means like it's only activated when it's down, not activated when it's up. And we don't really care about velocity values on the keys, at least. So instead of having these, we could make it choose between that, that you remember that there was a MIDI message saying that it was 144 when the button was down, 128 when the button was up. Now, we don't really need that. We can make a toggle. Delete these. The toggle is basically a button which just says on and off. You can do that by pressing the button T. It comes on a toggle. Now, let's see. You see? Something sets the toggle and another bang reverses it. So this should, if I press key number 36, it should be on. And when I let go of it, it should be off. Whoop. That works pretty well already. Now... We just duplicate these. Control D. There you go. And make these go here. Now we can put all four on if we love if I can hit four keys. There you go. And they're on and they're off. This is gonna be one of the basics of this this tool we're gonna build that when I press a certain key on the keyboard, I want an effect to be on, and when I let go, it's off. To tell you this in details, uh, later on, we're going to, I have planned to put in either a reverb, and I got this, this tape stop and this stretcher tool, and we're going to assign the, the knob buttons to, um, to those to those VST effects and I want them to be on and off whenever I push it and I want it to be on on let's let's say we have these these eight different channels that runs eight parts of the loop and it's going to be very interesting when we get, when we when we're done